All right, this is your brother Aisha Yara coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquat that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled America Will Be Under Martial Law Soon. All right. America will be under martial law soon. Now, I got inspired to do this lesson because of what recently happened when I uh, was at camp uh, last week. And uh, pretty much, you know, nothing major happened. Uh, you know, uh, nothing extreme <laughs> or anything like that. It was just, uh, we was just out there, you know, this this teaching. And then the next thing you know, a, a cop rolled up and he just parked right beside us. <laughs> All right. He just parked right there. Like, literally... If somebody were to walk down the street and just be like, yeah, I'm just ready to stand next to you. That's exactly what he did, but only with the car, man. All right, and that shit was weird. And um, when it happened, I still was like, okay, man, should we even continue to teach? Because I'm like, I don't even feel comfortable going forward, you know, uh, trying to bring out the word. And he literally just standing there. Because at first, when he pulled up, I thought he was just seeing what we were about, you know, making sure we wasn't doing anything as far as bringing any ruckus or whatever. <laughs> All right, but he literally just rolled on in and just parked right there and just stood there, man. All right, and then after that, uh, the Lord got it to the point where he had it rain because at first we was just going to continue to teach and just see if he was going to drive away or not. But then the Lord got it to the point where he brought down the rain even heavier, so then we ended up going to another spot and finishing camp there. All right, but of course, you know, um, once we were done with camp and everything, and I really just started thinking about the situation, I was just like, man, you know, the first thing I thought about was martial law. Because um, in the city of Chicago, man, you know, the, the police starting to lock down on a lot of areas because, you know, Chicago is definitely one of the most well-known places of being just straight up <laughs> chaotic, man. All right. People just go crazy down there for no reason. And there's a lot of different things that's happening in the city and you know that's where i'm from man i'm from the city and every time i go down there uh because i no longer live in that city but every time i go down there man it's just it's just completely different every single time man you could tell it's getting worse and worse and um we already know pretty much it's going to get to the point where police are not going to be doing anything because police are going to uh quit their jobs and their careers because they're going to realize they're getting fucked over with a lot of things and uh, they're going to start siding with the people when all of these riots and everything happen, when the streets shut down, so forth and so on. All right. And then, you know, of course, you know, the next thing you know, they're going to usher in martial law because they're going to have to have uh, their order uh, brung in. And they're going to make sure that their new world order is uh, going forward with martial law by force. All right. Because the main thing that's going to go down is the MOTB, which is the microchip. And they're going to make sure that people take it. And the way that they're going to make sure that people take it is by martial law. They're going to have the troops out here patrolling the streets, breaking in people's houses, asking you if you got the MOTB. If not, you're going to be cast into these FEMA camps. They're going to leave you alone out in the wilderness somewhere. All right. Women are going to be snatched up. Men are going to be snatched up. All right. This is what it's going to be. This is why the script is saying it's going to be a time like never before. All right. So I'm just going to show you real quick. <laughs> Like I said, nothing extreme happened, you know, but when you see the police, you know, we already don't like police. And you see the police, you know, just roll up like that. He just stand there. And you know, he just like, all right, man, you know, you, you, you get weird vibes from it. All right. So let me just go ahead. And, like I said, just a few seconds so you can just see. Then we're going to grab a few scriptures. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, you got jugs. I'm like, man, you seen that game yesterday? <laughs> <clears throat> see, it, it was, like I said, I ain't gonna play too much. It wasn't nothing. Like I said, we was trying to, you know, see if he was gonna move. Because the way he was, the police officer was acting, he waved at us and everything. You know, we were just trying to see if he was gonna, uh, just see what we are about and then move. And he ended up just, just sitting there, man. And then, like I said, uh, the most high, the most high made the rain come down. And the rain started hitting us. And I just got this new camera. <laughs> 
It's been a while since I was able to get a new camera. Finally starting to catch, catch up on things and all of that. And I was like, I'll be damned when this camera get fucked up. <laughs> I was like, man, spend some money up on this. And I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't about to get this messed up. So we was like, nah, we're going to go ahead and move. But like I said, when you, I just got, you know, many martial law, martial law vibes from that. Like I said, it wasn't nothing extreme or whatever. But we already know this is the type of thing that's getting ready to happen in America. All right. We're going to be literally walking down the streets. All of the stores are going to be um, secured by troops. The uh, neighborhoods, everything. Because I'm starting to see it now just from going to certain grocery stores. You go to certain grocery stores, man, they got police guarding the entrances, the exits, making sure that people not stealing food and everything. You know, we just getting a glimpse of how it's going to be, all right? And this is not even really a glimpse because ain't nothing happening. You know, we kind of got a glimpse in 2020 because I remember uploading a video then, you know, when the troops were walking down... Uh, some city, I forget what it was, but they were telling people, you know, get back in the house, you know, because it was a curfew back then. Back then, you know, they was like, no, nah, by this certain time or whatever, you got to go back in the crib. And people over here pulling out their phones, trying to record the troops walking down the street, and they thought it was sweet. And actually, you know, one of the troops shot at them. And you could tell they missed on purpose. It was a warning shot. And then people was like, oh, man, they serious. They serious. Hurry up. Get back in the house. Get back in the house. When they, you know when that happened, I'm like, damn, they wasn't playing no games. And then, like I said, once again in Chicago, I remember going back down there to meet up with some brothers, and um, I was down downtown Chicago, and I just remember, remember all the police just flooding the streets, man. Police flooding the streets, people flooding the streets, and I remember you know making a video about them, like, man, look at this, and. The, but the brothers was like, hey, we're going to have to reschedule. <laughs> like, we're going to have to reschedule. We ain't, we ain't trying to go down there through all that. And I, yeah, I was like, hey, I feel you on that. We, <laughs> It's all good. I could come back down here another time. But it is what it is. We already know this is the type of state America is going to come into. America will soon be under martial law, man. It's not going to be a game when it happens. They're going to actually see or well, everybody's going to actually see what America is all about, aka Esau. All right, when these things go down, it ain't gonna be no joke. It ain't gonna be no, oh yeah, let's go to a party, let's do this, let's do that. Y'all gonna see how serious Esau is when it comes to his new war order, because just like it says in Revelation 12 and 12, let's get it. Revelation 12 verse 12 it says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So, great wrath is what? Anger, force, violence. All right? Let's get the Greek word real quick. Let's see what it's saying. All right, here's the Greek word. Strong's G2372. Thumas. Thumas. Thumas, all right. And as you can see right here, fierceness, indignation, passion, angry, heat, anger for with boiling up, boiling up, and soon subsiding again. Glow, adore the wine of passion, and flaming wine, which either drink drives a drink of mad or kills him with his strength. All right, but as you can see, it says fierceness. All right, angry, heat, anger. All right, and you, you damn right Esau is angry because he know that his time is about to be up and he want his kingdom to continue forever, but it's not going to happen. And this is why he's getting ready to bring that great wrath because he know that he has but a short time. He know that he's about to be kicked out of that rulership seat. All right. So he's going to pretty much throw this big ass worldwide temper tantrum. <laughs> all right. And he's going to use his troops and use all of the, all of his power and force and weapons. And he's going to force it upon the people through martial law. Martial law is going to make sure that they enforce these unrighteous decrees. All right? And they're going to make sure that this new world order plan goes out the way it's supposed to go. All right? And they, they ain't nothing but the uh, sw the sword of the Most High. All right? You can read about that. I think it's in the book of Psalms or Proverbs. I, I forget which one. It's Psalms or Proverbs, but it tells you Esau is the Most High sword. All right? And he's going to use Esau to bring judgment on two-thirds of our own people. And a lot of his own people. Esau's going to bring great wrath on, on his own people too. 
because there's gonna be a lot of uh edomites out there that's gonna uh reject that chip man they're not gonna be for you already got videos out here with them saying if they bring in another lockdown they're not for it they like no i'm not i will not close my business again i will not do this i will not do that this is america i have my right to keep my place open and guess what martial law gonna kick in they're gonna be like all right well let's see what happened and guess what a lot of people gonna start gearing up with their weapons and everything man all right they're gonna start gearing up and <laughs> that's when shit gonna hit the fan but this is what we supposed to do when these things go down man we supposed to be just like yeah how shy all right this is matthew chapter 26 verse 45 it says they come and he to his disciples and says unto them sleep on now and take your rest Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. All right? You know, when you read this scripture, how wish I knew at the time of him getting ready to be taken was at hand, and he was going to be betrayed into the hands of sinners, our people. All right? And um, he already knew this was the time where he was going to have to be put on the cross, and he was going to have to go through that brutal um judgment that he had to go through all right and uh he didn't want to go through it he he prayed to the most high like man you can't give me another cup but he was a man and he already knew that prophecy had to be fulfilled and he finished his work and that's exactly what we got to do when these things go down we know that the time is at hand where when we see these things go down we're going to realize that any moment the police martial law they could break in our in, um in our cribs they can snatch us up while we out on the street. They can snatch us up out of nowhere when we in the grocery stores and everything. You never know where it might happen. All right? But we just got to be prepared for that and allow it to happen. Just like how Shah allowed it to happen. We're not going to fight back. All right? Just like it says right here. Verse four, uh, 47. It says that while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came. And with him a great multitude with swords and staves for the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Yahweh and said, Hail, master, and kissed him. And Yahweh said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yahweh unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. All right? Yahweh was like, Look, this ain't the time for that. He was like, Here it is. Let's just keep reading. Verse 53 it says, Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? I, I love this scripture. This is one of my favorite ones. Because, like I said, Yahweh knew who he was. He like, man, do you think I can't pray to the Most High right now and bring down 12 legions of angels to jack this place up? He like, I don't need you to pull out your sword and do this. He said, man, this ain't the time for that. Why? Because he said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? He said, how can the scriptures be fulfilled? How can prophecy go forward if we go and be carnal and fight back? This is not our time to be fighting. This is why this is a spiritual warfare, all right? When martial law and everything go down, what chance do we really have, realistically? We don't have the weapons that they have. We don't have the armor that they have. We don't have the security and the power and all of that that they have. We can't do anything. Yahweh was like, look, this, you know, let the scriptures be fulfilled. He knew he was, what was going on. He was just like, look, we're just going to allow this to happen. And he did. He was like, man, put up your sword. This ain't the time for that. All right. Verse 55, it says, In that same hour, said Yahweh Shai to the multitudes, Are uh, ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. All right? This is the whole point. The scriptures have to be fulfilled. Prophecy have to go forward. So when these things happen, we're not going to fight back at all. We're going to allow it to happen. When you see martial law roll up on you, they ask you, do you have the MOTB? Or they just recognize you because of you pushing the truth. Man, you just, you're not going to say anything. You're not going to, 
you know, try to punch them or anything like that, you're just going to be like, you know what? Let's just leave it alone. You're going to allow it to happen. You're going to allow them to take you, all right, lock you up, or, you know, if something happened where the Mosai allows you to escape, you know, you're going to go away, go in the wilderness somewhere, you're going to try to avoid them. Whatever the case may be, we got to see how it plays out for every single one of us, but we understand that prophecy must be fulfilled, so we're not going to try to fight back like some people that's in the truth are actually going to try to do over here gearing up with different weapons and everything. This ain't the time for that, man. All right? You'll realize when you're able to fight back once salvation hits or when you receive that that spiritual power, man, that's going to be the time when you realize, okay, now it's my turn. All right? We're going to get Isaiah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to get Isaiah chapter 30. And we're going to start at verse 1, all right? It says, Woe to the, uh, to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust, trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Because there's a lot of people out there that's actually, right now, they trust America. They trust in the police system. All right? They trust the way that everything is operating. All right? They're going to see. This is going to be your confusion. When you actually see the way America is getting down, when shit hit the fan, this is going to be your confusion. This is going to be your shame because you trusted in America. Then it's really going to be your shame because you're going to trust in the shadow of Egypt by taking that MOTB. All right? Even though you walking down the street and you seeing martial law snatching up people, doing them wrong, you hearing screams everywhere, all right, cars speeding down the block all fast, you know, gunshots going off everywhere, you still going to trust in this devil anyway, because that's how simple the majority of our people are, all right? They're going to want things to hurry up and get back to normal, so they're going to trust in the shadow of Egypt. A lot of them are going to line up, they're going to take that ship. And guess what? That's going to be your demise, man. That's where that Revelation 14 and 9 going to kick in. That's where the Most High is going to allow you and make sure that you're in the lake of fire, which is the nuclear destruction. All right? Let's get 2nd Ezra. We're going to get 2nd Ezra chapter 16. You know we got to get this. <laughs> 16. We're going to start at verse 67. And it says, Behold, the Most High himself is the judge Fear him, leave off from your sins, and forget not your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever, so shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. This is what we're doing right now. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. We're fearing Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We're trying to do what's right by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai every single day. That's why he said, leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities, so that way he can deliver you from all trouble. We're coming to the greatest trouble, Jacob's trouble. All right, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Daniel 12 and 1, all right? We're coming to the greatest trouble of all time. This is why we say this is the best time to get right with the Lord. The scriptures say, make no tarrying to turn back to the Lord. Because when these things go down and you realize you don't have any protection, it's not going to be a game then, man. Because a lot of people out there just be like, well, you know, I'm going to come back in the kingdom anyway. I might as well just go ahead and just live it up now. I don't care if I die. All right. Let's see how you feel when you actually got to live through those situations, man. You're going to wish and you're going to pray that you repent it, but it's going to be too late. Verse 68, it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. And they that consented to them shall be had in derision and in, and in reproach and trodden underfoot. It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Those madmen is going to be martial law. All right, they're going to be. They're just going to go crazy, man. They're not going to hold back. Just like how the Lord gave the uh, the, the the order to the angels in Ezekiel nine and four, told them like, man, spare none. Don't, don't have any pity. That's how they're going to be like, man. 
they're not gonna have any pity for these people. They showed you that in the um the TV show uh, Black Mirror, when uh, the police officers they had um oh man I don't I don't know if they had certain things in their eyes or a certain uh, chip in their head or I, I forget, but whenever. They went into certain areas or whatever. They looked at the regular citizens and they were looking like the roaches. So they were just going out there like, oh shit, it's a roach, shoot that. You know, just killing everything that they saw. But in real, real, and realistically, in real time, those were actually people. And then the black dude, when he saw it, when he finally saw for what it was, he was like, hey, hey man, y'all getting ready to kill that. And then the people was like, no, that's a roach. And they didn't hesitate. They was just getting them, man. Getting them, lighting them on fire shooting them stabbing them beating them up all of that that's what's going to happen in real life in this world they shall be like man men sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the lord for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses all right like i said they're going to start breaking into people's houses snatching you up because a lot of people like i said is gonna say no to the motb and guess what they're gonna just, <laughs> just break in the crib snatch you up and before they just uh take you straight to these female camps in these prisons like i said a lot of these women gonna get caught out there man they're gonna realize like oh man she fine i remember you you had only fans oh man look at you you was wearing this oh man look at you now now you you might not even have an only fans it is look at you be like oh man it's a whole woman over here let me go ahead and do what i want with her real quick and it's and the most i'm gonna allow it to happen and like I said earlier, you already know why Esau get down. He was looking at a lot of these so these men out here the same way. <laughs> That's a fucking nightmare, man. Hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why we look. That's what that's why I say what it say. Behold, the most high himself is to judge. Fear him. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Fear you, how about Shimmy? I was shot. Cause that that's that's <laughs> getting snatched up by Esau in that position, man. That shit getting that shit worse than getting shot, man. Fuck that. This is why we say fear the most high. Leave off from your sins, man. Because they gonna yeah, they will be like man, man, and they gonna do whatever they want when they want, man. Like I said, once they take all of your goods and everything and do whatever they want with you, then they gonna cash you out of the house. Then they gonna take you to the female camps, and then you gonna have to go through more judgment. Because I remember Apostle Gabar was speaking about this a while ago on he, how, he, how he, uh, he saw a video with a brother saying that um, he had a dream that uh, he was in a uh, FEMA camp or whatever and uh, all he heard was screams down the halls. The screams. All right. And it, of course, it wasn't pleasant screams. All right. And then they show you that in a lot of movies. I mean, I forget this one movie where people just locked up and. Um, they were chained up to beds. And then these uh, these this wild scientist doctor dude just came out of nowhere with a damn shovel. And he just going down in line, stabbing people with the damn shovel, man. And the people just over here just in pain and agony. Judgment is getting ready to go forth, man. This is how serious it's getting ready to be out here. All right. That's why we're going to keep reading. Verse 73, it says, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. That's right. Because we're getting ready to be in the midst of Jacob's trouble. But the same power that's getting ready to bring this trouble is going to be the same power that protects you and saves you. It says it right here. Verse 74. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Woo! Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said the Lord power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. All right? The same power that's going to bring this trouble is going to be the same power that deliver you. That's why he said, be ye not afraid, neither doubt. When these things happen and we see this face to face, we're actually experiencing jacob's trouble we're not gonna be afraid because scriptures like this is gonna keep us level-headed man it's gonna keep us where we need to be it's gonna keep us you know comfortable so to speak because we're gonna remember that there's a power out here that's gonna get us out of these situations 
Miracles are going to happen for us, brothers and sisters. Miracles are going to happen. We're going to be in situations and man, it could be a small miracle as far as they may just shoot you right there on the spot. But then as soon as they try to shoot you, the gun may jam. That may be an opportunity for you to get away. You know, something small like that. Or you might actually see a, a, a big miracle. Or you just be cornered by all the, all the troops. The next thing you know, you just melt in the wall or something and just get away. You're like, how I get here? And then, you know, you just realize an angel just helps you. You'd be like, whoa, I just experienced the power of the most high right there and then. And that's going to boost up your spirit even more to do what? Not be afraid or doubt. Because you're going to really see that the most high is your guide then. So this is what we're building up ourselves for. This is why we do this work, man. Because we want to make sure that we're prepared for the time that is at hand, which is Jacob's trouble. All right. So let's get one last scripture and close it out. All right. We're going to go back to Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. All right. And it says, again, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. You got to remember that. We may be in a situation where we may have to be martyrs. We may have to have our hair cut off. But it's okay. Because if we faithful unto death, he's going to give us a crown of life. Just like the scriptures say, the ones that die in this truth are going to be the first ones resurrected and beamed up into the chariot. All right? So don't be afraid. Don't fear when they cast you into prison and you realize you just in a man that's in the most dangerous and messed up state of course right now it's easier said than done yeah because you know we just doing videos we uploading them on youtube and everything but the thing is hey we go out to those streets and we build ourselves up we get ourselves ready for this and we know the most high is going to keep the holy spirit upon us to be ready for this lord willing when this go down we, we're not going to be afraid man we're going to be like this is it. And guess what? It's only going to be temporary. Because why? Because Esau got a short time. He only can do this for so long. Just like Apostle Tahar said. He was like, man, as soon as the MOTB is completely mandatory, expect Yahweh Shah to return any, in, at, in, at any time, man. Because it's not going to be a thing where people are going to line up, they're going to get chipped, and it's going to last for months. No, 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 no. The most high ain't having that. Because we already know when you take that chip, you pretty much bowing down to Esau. You, you pretty much bowing down to Esau, and Esau is upholding himself as a god or the god. The Most High is not gonna do that, man. The people who take the chip, they can't even have a way back to the Most High. <laughs> All right. So when this go down, yeah, yeah, how was shot? His anger gonna be, <laughs> his anger gonna be there, and guess what? He gonna get ready to shut this shit down, man. Only thing we got to do is fear none of the things, believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, and keep being faithful, man, because faith is what's going to get us out of here. That's what's going to get us out of here, and that's what's going to get us to the promised land. <laughs> that's going to get us to the kingdom. No more tears, no more crying, no more sighing, no more dying, none of that. First go around. That's what we want, all right? So remember that, man. Martial law coming. Martial law is coming. It's like this police officer standing right here. They're going to be this close. The truth's going to be this close to you when the time comes, man. All right? So just remember that. Prepare yourself for this because this is the last hoorah for death to go all out, man. All right? So keep praying to you. How about Shem Yahweh Shah? And stay faithful. So I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Kakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstones I learned his truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing his word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Rod I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharada. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.